Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a design masterclass. My name is Howard Pinsky, senior design evangelist here at Adobe. Hope you're all doing well on this Tuesday morning, afternoon, or evening. It feels like a Monday probably because we had yesterday off, but hope you're all doing well. If you are tuning in live here on Behance today, let me know in the chat who you are and where you're tuning in from. If you're tuning in on YouTube and you do want to chat along, I will be looking at the Behance chat. So head on over to behance.net slash Adobe Live. So far, we've got Carol and RB and Oliver. Great to see all of you. If you are tuning in for the first time, let me know that as well. I'd love to to know that. All right, so today is all about mockups. We're gonna be using Photoshop, we're gonna be using Illustrator, we might be touching on some Adobe Express, all sorts of good stuff. But the big question is, the heck is a mockup? May have never heard that term before. And I'm gonna show you not only what a mockup is, but also how you can start using mockups in your daily design world. So let's go ahead and hop over to my screen and we're gonna get going. So first of all, we're gonna start on Behance, where many of you might be watching this stream today. What a mockup is, is, I mean, there's a lot of different terms for a mockup, but it's really the idea of taking a design that you might be working on, whether it's a logo or a UI design, package design, all sorts of different things, and displaying it in a real world environment. So right away on the Behance homepage, you might be able, you. Actually, the homepage is over here. I'm gonna hop over there and it's gonna show you my For You section. This is kind of determined based on things that I've been browsing, all sorts of different things. But you might see something like this, right? This is not that. Wait, wait for it, wait for it. This could be considered a mock-up. You know, it's got a little border around it of a laptop or an iPad frame. Uh, but really the thumbnail of this particular project, you have a laptop and you have a design that you may have worked on inside of that. So it's more of a real world, um, you know, mock-up, right? Design. But if you scroll down, we've got some phones and some tablets, more laptops. And if I search for, let's say packaging, for example, right? If I spelled that right, I don't think I did spell that right because I never spell anything right when I'm streaming. But we've got billboards, we've got packaging design, coffee, which I could use some more coffee right now. Got some beauty packaging. Also this adorable, cute thing. I don't know what this is, but it's very cute. Uh, hey Frank, hey Marsha, hey Carol. I think I said Carol again. Uh, Carol says, watching you for years. Thank you, appreciate that. Uh, I've got some weird looking bananas, but a lot of this kind of falls in the world of mock-ups, taking a design and displaying it in a real world environment. Now, before we dive into Photoshop, I do wanna showcase something that we're working on in Illustrator. And if you follow me on Twitter, and yes, I'm still calling it Twitter, you may have seen this a while ago. It's this feature called mock-up very fitting, right? In Illustrator that we're working on, and actually when this video was released, it was a very early version of the mock-up feature. And it's the idea of taking a logo and positioning it automatically on packaging. And a lot of people assumed when I uploaded this that these packaging were all either vector or 3D models. They're actually not. So let me go ahead and hop over to Illustrator and this here is a flat image. It's a single JPEG, as you can see at the top here. Uh, actually, it's a PNG, but it's flat, right? So there's no 3D models, there's no vector, there's no paths, there's nothing, right? And if I go to my layers over here, you can see it's just an image, right? So I'm gonna hop over to this document where I have a bunch of logos. Now these ones are vector. So you can imagine a world where you're working on a bunch of logos, right? And you want to, and by the way, I should, I should mention that this particular feature is only available in the Illustrator beta. So if you go to your Creative Cloud app and then you go to your apps section, go down to beta apps, you'll be able to download the Illustrator beta. And this is available to everybody. Um, all Creative Cloud members, you can download beta apps, right? Um, I'll show you how this works in just a moment. but working on a logo, working on design, and you want to display it on a packaging of some sort, right? So we've got this logo here. I'm gonna copy it, boop, hop over here and paste it. Maybe I'll shrink it down a little bit and position it right here. Now, this looks fine, right? I can probably get away with this, but what if I wanted this logo maybe a little bit more up 
or on this side of this packaging here, right? A lot of places I might want to display this logo. So I'm going to go ahead and select the logo itself. And I'm also going to select the flat image behind it by holding down my shift key and clicking. So I've got both objects selected. And then under the object menu, I'm going to go down to mock-up and I want to press make. Now this is going to go a little bit slower than it previously did because the mock-up feature is a lot more in depth than it was before. You might notice if you have used it previously, we've got this new panel and you can immediately see your designs on all sorts of different uh, images, right? This is really cool. But what we want to focus on right now is the logo that we brought in and the flat image behind it. So again, I mean, it looks more or less the same, but watch what happens when I move this logo. Oh, it's all of a sudden conforming to that box behind it. And remember, the box behind it is a flat image. I don't know how it does this stuff, but watch this. View view, right? And sometimes the perspective might not be perfect. Hey, Cody, great to see you and Re Reverb, Mike and Frank. So I can just rotate, right? I can kind of move this around or I can move it down here and view. Look, it even conforms to the bend. So you can have it kind of wrap around two different sides of this box. And the fact that this whole thing is a flat image in the background, it's just kind of mind boggling. Um, so again, we've got all these, you know, different images over here, this one. So we can see it on an apron, for example, we can move it around. Um, and Reverb says displacement map in the chat. Yeah, there's probably a lot of displacement going on. There's, there's definitely some AI stuff going on in the background, uh, but all this is very, and this is a beta and probably still an early beta. I don't know when this feature is coming out, but you know, you can imagine how this could continue to advance in the future. So we've got this bag we can use and it's just really cool how we can, look at that. You can just move this over here to the side of this particular bag. We can rotate it around. Very cool stuff. Yeah, Peter says, love this. I do too. Hey, Christina and Cheryl, great to see all of you. All right. So that's a little bit of a sneak at the mock-up feature, which it's not much of a sneak if you can all use it right now. But yeah, download the Illustrator beta and under the object menu down to mock-up and then make, release, or edit, depending on where you are in that process. And we'd love to hear your feedback. You know, this is a beta. Um, I'm sure many of you probably didn't know this even existed. I didn't know it existed until not too long ago. So let us know what you think of it. And the fact that, you know, this panel now exists with all these different images and stuff. And you don't have to use an image from this particular panel. You can certainly use an image from Adobe Stock or an image that you've taken of your own and place a logo basically wherever you, you want. This is wild. And it's only going to get better, which is really cool. All right. Uh... Bevel is saying, love the song effects. Oh, maybe the background music. I think I fixed it. Let's see. Is the background music working today? It might be. All right. Does this mean they're getting rid of Dimension, Reverb Mike says? No, I don't think so. So uh, Dimension, which is now Substance, uh, ba 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 Hold on. Stager. That's the one. Um... So Substance Stager is basically the new dim Dimension, I believe. That I don't think the Substance... I mean, you know, substance danger is going anywhere. This is really for, um, you know, very basic mock-ups to display your logos and your packaging design inside of, you know, images like this. Uh, it certainly doesn't replace 3D features or applications. So the substance stuff is still there, um, only going to get better. Very, there's so much. I've tried to dive into the substance uh, suite. It's way over my head. Where I went to school for 3D design and animation in college, uh, and all this stuff is just so advanced and so powerful. It's fun, right? But it's just, I don't have time to really dive in and, and have some fun. All right, uh, let's see. I keep getting new updates from Adobe. Uh, yeah, so our beta apps are are updating a lot. Uh, obviously Photoshop, we have generative fill and expand. We've got Illustrator with our uh, mock-up and a few other things, uh, a lot of fun stuff. Now, speaking of Photoshop, we can hop over to Photoshop. We can start going over some mock-up examples. 
in Photoshop. So let me go ahead just for a moment and actually let me hop over to Illustrator for one more second because I do have these logos that we were working on, but I might want to use some of these logos now in Photoshop. So I'm very quickly, I'm going to hop over to my libraries and I do have a library of a bunch of logos that we use for, uh, you know, various events and demos. And I might want to just boop, pop this in here. No, go away. There we go. We've got a logo there. Maybe I'll pop this one in here. Did I get it? Yep, I did. And this one's a fun logo. Pop that in there. Perfect. All right. So I've got a few logos inside of my library and these are all going to sync over to, you know, my, this particular library, which will also be available in Photoshop. If I hop over here, here's that same library and my logos are here. So you can also use Photoshop to create mockups and display logos on images as well. So we might want to start with a shirt and this is a, you know, pretty common example. Now the big question some of you might have is where do I get this picture of a shirt or any picture of a shirt, right? If you don't have one of your own, if you hop over to Adobe stock, right? Good place to get images. So you can type in something like t-shirt, right? And you're going to get, I don't even know how many images you're going to get of t-shirts, but you're going to get 4.6 million images. Now, obviously some of these are vector. Some of them are all sorts of different things, but you can filter over to the left-hand side. Let's say if we just want photos and we are going to find 2.4 million. That's a lot. Now, this particular section is the, not premium, but the paid section. So, you know, all of these, you would have to license with credits. If you don't have credits or anything of that nature, there's a free section right at the top and all the free images, vectors or whatever are available type of t-shirt to use personally and commercially, which is wonderful. Thank you, Cody, for posting the link to Adobe stock and the free section. So I can hop over here to photos. So we've got 8,104 free images that you can use. So you can browse any of these. You can license them completely for free and use in your projects, right? So if I hop over back to Photoshop for a second, what we can do is we can now bring in a design, whether it's a flattened image or a illustrator file from our library. So I can grab this same logo, pop it on here, make this a little bit smaller and there we go. Now, of course, it looks fine, right? If we just want to plop it there and kind of get an idea of the size of this particular logo. But there are a few things we can do to really make this better. The first thing is we can experiment with blend modes and blend modes you can find over here to the right within your layers panel. Or if you double click on the layer itself, you've got your blend modes right up here. But right from here, from the layers panel where it says normal, we can just browse some of our blend modes. And depending on the background, depending on the logo itself, you might have to experiment with a few different ones, but you know, just moving your cursor and your mouse down the different blend modes is gonna update in real time, right? So we've got some of the color dodges, interesting, gives a little bit more of a grungy effect. Multiply is a pretty big one when you're dealing with logos and shirts, but it does kind of remove some of those you know, the colors, right? It blends in really nicely. So definitely experiment. Sometimes overlay or soft light looks pretty nice. That's not bad. So I think soft light looks decent. So it kind of blends it in quite nicely. And as you continue to, you know, resize the logo, it works. Now, another option, it's a little bit more advanced, is to use blend if. So let me go ahead and double click on the layer. I'm going to set the blend mode back to normal, right? And down at the bottom of the layer styles dialog, you're gonna find your blend if section. And this will allow you to blend the, you know, the shadows and the highlights of your, either your current layer or the underlying layer. Now, in this case, we probably don't wanna to touch the current layer, which is the logo. We want to blend it with the underlying layer. Now, if you were to simply take, let's say the uh, shadow slider, right? And move it to the right. It's gonna blend, but it's very harsh, which in this case, we certainly don't want. Now you might notice if I zoom in here, the slider has a line in the middle and that indicates that you can actually split this slider into two, right? So I'm going to hold down my alter option key, option on the Mac, alt on windows and grab, let me actually zoom in a little bit again. 
I'm going to grab the right side of this slider, hold down my Alter Option key, and then drag it over. And now you're noticing it's blending in again, but very gradually. Let me zoom out. I can do the same thing on the highlight side. It may not make much sense in this particular case, but you can do that, right? And if you did want to a little bit more harsh, you can drag more grungy kind of, you can drag the, uh, the left side of that shadow slider, right? So it just kind of blends it really nicely, just like that which looks quite nice. So it gives you a, a similar result to when you're using the blend modes, but this gives you a little bit more control over the shadows and the highlights of the underlying layer or even the current layer, right? Which looks nice. Now, another option we can do is we can use a displacement map and this will allow us to, and this kind of goes back to what Reverb was talking about earlier. This allows us to kind of mold the logo to some of the folds in this shirt. Now in this particular case, the shirt isn't very foldy, um, but we can try it. It almost looks like there's a face. You see it? There's an eye here, an eye here, and a, anyways, um, I'm weird. So what we can do here is, what I like to do with my displacement maps is first blur the image a little bit, just so that the, the folds are not too harsh. So I'm gonna select the background layer, and then under the, yeah, Peter says it gives it a vintage look. It kind of does, right? It's fun. Under the uh, filter menu, I'm gonna go down to blur and there's, you know, there's a million different blurs, but I think a Gaussian blur is pro not that, right? Very subtle Gaussian blur. Um, we're gonna keep it very, just to kind of smooth out the folds just a little bit, right? So maybe somewhere around 0.7. Right, and all we want to do now, it, now some people will say you also, you know, take the color out of the, the overall image. Sometimes that helps, sometimes it doesn't. Um, just to appease people, uh, I can either add an adjustment layer, like a black and white adjustment layer, right? Or I can just remove it within it, uh, just a regular adjustment. Now, we, what we wanna do is we wanna save this as a PSD, so a Photoshop file, right? So file, save as, boop, right there. And I'm gonna save it in this folder here. I'm gonna just call this displacement and press save. Very good. So now I can go back to before I did the blur, before I added the adjustment layer. And what we want to do now is on the logo layer, which I'm going to for now, just remove any sort of blend mode, any sort of blend if. What I want to do is go to filter and then go down to distort and then displace. And this will allow me to basically control the displacement, the scaling, all sorts of different things. A lot of this will depend on the size of your image, the size of the displacement, all sorts of different things, how many folds, blah, blah, blah. But definitely experiment with these values. So I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. I'm going to select the displacement that I saved just a moment ago and press open. And you're gonna notice it's starting to fold a little bit. And this is really where I'm talking about, you know, experiment with the different values because 10 for the horizontal and vertical might be too much, it might be too little. So, you know, definitely experiment. And if you're working with smart objects, you can always double click and change this to let's say 20 and 20. Same displacement. That's a bit too much, right? So we might wanna actually drop that to maybe five and five to keep it nice and subtle. That's a little bit better, right? It's subtle, but it adds a little bit of fold. And of course, if your image in the background has a lot more folds, let's say you're working with a flag, for example, you might see a better result. And then from here, you can go back and experiment again with your blend modes and blend if, right? Just to blend it in a little bit, just like that. And we've got that vintagey feel to it. Fun, right? Now, depending on the color of your shirt, that's gonna change a lot, right? So one more example before we move on to something else. But if we added something, you know, like this, the blend modes could change a lot. Just to kind of show you, you know, the, the screen, the lighter blend modes, definitely don't want in this case. Uh, overlay, soft light, it's gonna give you that very washed out feel. 
but something like vivid light, not too bad, hard light, decent, but mostly, you know, the multiply or color burn at the top. And then you can combine multiply with, um, you know, your blend if. Now, of course, you're going to have to move the shadow slider for the underlying layer quite a bit to the right because there are very few shadows on this particular shirt, but you get the idea, right? There we go. Something like that. Keep it nice and simple. All right. Decent, right? All right. So next thing I want to cover moving on from shirts is some more advanced uh, mockups and templates. And you might want, for example, to display your packaging or your designs on something like a billboard or a box of some sort or something to that effect, right? So if you didn't want to create it yourself, you can download some templates, again, from Adobe Stock. So there's two places you can go. First place is under the template section at the top. Now these are, I believe, all paid. So if you go to, you know, templates and then we've got Photoshop templates, motion graphics, Adobe Express templates, which will take you to Adobe Express, InDesign. But if you go to Photoshop and then you can search for something like either mock-up or if you have something very specific in mind, you can enter it at the top as well. And you're going to find a ton of different mock-up templates that you can download for things like shirts and laptops and magazines. And what's nice is all of these are completely editable and they typically use smart objects. Now, if you again, if you don't have credits, if you go to the free section and you scroll down. So we've got free photos, vectors, free videos. You keep scrolling down, keep scrolling, and then down over here, you've got templates, right? So if you do wanna look for free Photoshop templates, you can certainly go down here and you can find, some of these are a little bit more basic, but they might get you by, right? You've got some phone templates and you've got all sorts of different things that you can certainly use in your projects. But let's, let's say for example, just to kind of show you how this works, a phone template, right? So you can go ahead and license one of these. I do have one license already over in Finder. Um, they come in as a PSDT, so it's a template file, right? And you'll wanna go ahead and drag this into Photoshop, which I'm gonna ha have over here on my other monitor. And here's what one of these templates might look like. It looks pretty basic, right? It looks like an image with this screen. But the beauty of this is that over here in your layers panel, you've got your background image, right? And then you've got this layer here, which you might notice at the bottom right hand corner, we've got a smart object icon, right? Which really helps tremendously when you're dealing with mockups, because the last thing you want to do, let me actually show you an example. If I hop over to Finder and I grab an image here, we've got, let's say this image here, let me use groups for a second, pop this in here. So the last thing you want to do is you, you don't want to, you know, fin try to finesse this image into place, especially if you're working with a design that has multiple layers, it's just going to be a hassle. So you could grab, you know, I'm holding down my command or control key and you eh, move this over here and then move this kind of over here and then move that. And it kind of looks sort of fine, right? Especially if you take some time to, oops, take some time to mask out you know, the hand over here. It sort of looks okay. But then if you wanna edit the image or replace it, it just, then you have to go through the process all over again. So the beauty of smart objects in these templates is all you have to do is double click on the smart object. It's gonna take you to a flattened version of that image. And then I can go back to Finder, boop, pop this into place. I can resize it if I have to. Down here at the bottom, might want to make it a little bit lar larger. And then save, command and control S, and there we go, right? Now, obviously, this particular template has that, um, the, what's it called? The thing at the top, the notch. Now there's the dynamic island, which is wonderful. Uh, so definitely, you know, find a template that works for your design or just don't include you know what we can do is we can just get rid of this we could use generative fill we probably don't need to in this particular example right whoops oh it's a smart object let me rasterize this i don't need that as a smart object and then fill content aware should work just fine 
It did save it and then right that looks a little bit better. Now, obviously, some of the things are a little bit off centered, but you get the idea, right? So that's the you know, the beauty of using templates in uh, you know from Adobe Stock. Now, what if you wanted to create your own? Let me show you. Hop over to Finder, go to template uh, my folder. So I have a few examples, right? This one here, uh, another image from Adobe Stock. Very quickly, all I did was I went to I think the free section. In this case, I just searched. Think holding phone. And then I filtered it by images and I grabbed an image here. Now these ones here are flat images. So you're not gonna get the benefit of having a smart object right away. But back over in Photoshop, actually back over in Finder, uh, if I open this in Photoshop, actually, let's actually go open this one here because this is a little bit more of a complex example. This one here is more it's basically flat. It'd be a lot easier, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and open this with Photoshop. And it's probably a very large image. Yeah, I don't need 300. 72 is probably fine, right? So again, going back to what I was talking about earlier, if we did want to grab an image, right? We could kind of finesse this into place using our perspective tools. Kind of like that. And then we'd probably mask everything out and everything would look sort of great, right? Um, but then you, if you want to replace this image, it's just you would have to do the entire process again. Grab an image, pop it in here, finesse it into place using perspective, blah, blah, blah. It's just a pain, right? So on an example like this, what I would typically do, the first thing I would do is mask out this screen. And you can do this in many different ways. You can use your object selection tool, which would sometimes work, right? Let's, there we go. So it's gonna select more or less the entire phone, which in this case, we probably don't want, we want more of just the screen. So I can use, let's say the quick selection tool, drag over top and I've got my screen, right? Now, if I were to press the, the mask button, layer mask button at the bottom of my layers, right? it's going to mask everything except the screen, which I certainly don't want. So there are two ways we can get around this. We can either press the invert selection button on our contextual taskbar, or we can hold down our alter option key and then press the mask button, right? And that's going to mask out just the screen. So it's gonna remove the screen so that way everything behind it is transparent. Reverb is saying add some reflections possibly. Yes, we can certainly add some reflections afterwards. So now, we can hop over, grab an image, pop it in, and we could move it behind, right? And then finesse it into place. But we still have that problem. And you know, the, the borders are a little bit funky, but we can easily um, deal with that. But we still have the problem that if we, even after we did all this, everything looks great. If we want to replace the image, we'd have to do this whole process over again. So my suggestion, su suggestion, before you do anything, bring the image into Photoshop, and then before you do any perspective, before you do anything, convert it into a smart object if it isn't already. Now, many times when you import an image, it does get converted into a smart object, right? So that's exactly what we want. You wanna make sure it is a smart object. If it's not, let me rasterize this layer quickly. You'll right click on the layer and then convert to smart object. Now, what does this mean? If you have no idea what a smart object is, here's what it means. Essentially, it's taking this layer in its current state and it's preserving exactly what it looks like. It's preserving all the pixels, it's preserving the perspective, all that fun stuff, right? That's why you don't wanna change the perspective before converting to a sm yeah, right? You don't wanna change the perspective first and then convert because it's gonna preserve exactly that. Now, another benefit of this is so right now it's not a smart job, smart object. If I were to resize this down, right? And then realize, you know what? I need that image nice and large. Resize it back up. Ugh, right? Because you resize it down, you crunched all those pixels together and then you want to resize it back up. Well, it's gonna look like that, right? So by converting it to a smart object first, and then resizing it down, 
Because all those original pixels have been preserved, you can now go back to its original size and it looks magical, right? But another benefit is that you can now adjust the perspective and the original image, which is this, is also preserved. So I'm going to, once again, Command and Control T to enter my transform. And I'm going to start adjusting my perspective. Something like this. Make sure the lines line up. I'm not too worried about it lining up perfectly. But something like this, right? And then I can make sure that it's behind this layer. Again, the borders are a little bit funky, but I can very easily change that with select and mask or all sorts of different things. Maybe I can shift the edge a little bit inwards. Smooth it out a touch, you know, you get the idea, right? And the nice thing is if I do have to go back and adjust the perspective again, because I was using a smart object, all of that is preserved, right? So that looks okay. Again, the notch in the dynamic island, not great, but we have our smart object preserved. So I can always double click on this, make my changes just like I did before with our, whoops, content aware, save it. And there we go. Looks kind of fancy. Now going back to, I think what Reverb Mike was, Mike was saying earlier, reflections would probably make this look a little bit nicer. But again, the massive benefit of using smart objects is everything is preserved. So I can double click on this. You know what? Maybe I don't want this particular image or I wanna see what another screen looks like. I can just hop over to Finder, maybe drag this one in, save it, and there it is. It just automatically updates in the perspective that we changed earlier, which is wonderful, right? All right, let's go over one more example in terms of creating your own smart object. And I do have over here in templates, we've got billboards, right? So we've got this one and we've got this one. And I might wanna bring this into Photoshop. I'm gonna change this to 72. Now, of course, if you are using these particular mockups and images for print, then you'll probably wanna keep the resolution at 72. That's one of the big benefits of grabbing images from Adobe Stock is you've got massive, not just, you know, pixels or in inches, right? But you've also got huge resolution, which helps tremendously when you are printing. But for digital, 72 works fine. So again, you know, if we wanted something like this, um, but we wanted a poster or a billboard in perspective, right? Um, if you did have an image, let's say, you know, this image here, right? Again, before you wanna make sure it's a smart object and then you can go ahead and do your transformations. But what if you wanted something completely new, right? So very quickly, I can just do this. Looks wonderful, sort of. Um, and then I can always double click on it. But what if you wanted something new? So if we wanted to create our own poster or, you know. So I can go ahead and let's grab a rectangle. Right, so we've got basically what we want for our poster. Of course, if you have specific sizes in mind, you can enter those as you're creating this. But when you create the rectangle, you can then create your smart object, right? So you create the smart object and then you can transform it. Something like this. Beautiful. And now you can go ahead and double click. It's gonna open up a new document. Probably don't need a stroke around it. There we go. And we've got our document. So, I mean, it's basically just one rectangle, but now we can go through the process of designing our poster, right? So I can go ahead and let's hop over to maybe our athletes folder. Maybe I'll grab this image here. I've used this one before, pop this in. Make it nice and large. The red background's kind of nice, but I want to go ahead and um, extract this guy from the background so I can go ahead and just remove background like that. That looks pretty good. There's a little bit down here I'd probably want to edit. So I do have my layer mask selected over here to the right. I'm going to grab a brush. Make sure I'm painting with black. And... Or another thing you can potentially do, right, um, is... 
go back to blend if. Now blend if, it doesn't only work with grays, it also works with reds, blues, or greens. So I can potentially blend that out just a little bit, right? Now it did blend out a little bit of his skin. Um, so I think in this case, we might want to just brush out. There we go, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, the background, we might want maybe a gradient back there. So I'm gonna grab my gradient tool. Maybe I'll do a linear gradient. In terms of the colors, we'll start it off with foreground to background and maybe we'll do like a lighter gray. Yeah, the red is definitely reflecting on him, which if you're using something like blend if will probably not help at all. Uh, at all. There we go, something like that. We've got our new gradient tools, which is wonderful. All right. And we can go ahead and type some text. Move it above or below, whatever. What font is this? A fancy font. Which font? Oh, Blenny. It's a good one. Come on. Nope. Move. There we go. Not a big fan of the white on the gray, but we're going to leave it for now. Or we can maybe do like a darker... Eh. I don't know. I'll leave it for now, right? But the point is, we can now go ahead and save this, Command and Control S. And if we hop back over here, we now have our new billboard. Now, it looks, it looks fine, but it definitely looks a little bit off. So the nice thing about using these layers is you can now apply some layer effects directly to this layer. So if I double click on this smart object, making sure not to double click on the thumbnail, which will take us to our smart object document, but double click beside it, or you can go up to the layer menu and then down to, where is it? Uh, layer effects, layer styles, somewhere right there. Um, you'll be able to access your layer styles. We can now add things like drop or inner shadows, for example, right? So we might want an inner, inner shadow on the inside of this billboard on the left side and the right side, right? Woo, I zoomed in way too much. There we go. So I can, let's change this to, let's say multiply. Probably don't want it too soft. Maybe I'll go zero, right? So we're adding a little bit of shadow now. <laughs> Drop the opacity. All of a sudden, it's looking almost like it belongs. It still doesn't look great. And the nice thing is you can add multiple inner shadows as well. So I can add one from the bottom here. Something like that, right? It's looking a little bit better, uh, especially if we compare it with the original. Well, I mean, the original was just basically a white box. But we can also start to add maybe some highlights or reflections. So if I go ahead and I'm gonna keep this very simple, I'm gonna grab my polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to simply click, click. And I'm purposely going outside of the bounds, which is fine. I can also double click over here to com uh, complete the selection. And I want, I wanna fill this with either white or a gradient, right? So I'm gonna start by creating a new layer over within my layers panel. I'm gonna grab my gradient. This time I wanna go from foreground to transparent. And then foreground, I'm gonna make sure to keep that at white and just drag this, oop, oh, definitely don't want radial. I want a linear gradient, something like this. Right, now obviously we have a problem, right? It's going outside of our actual billboard display. So all we have to do now is make sure to clip it. So we can either do that by right clicking on the layer and then create clipping mask, or we can hold down our alter option key, hover in between the two and click, which is going to place it inside of it. Now, it's looking a little bit soft, looking a little bit overpowering, and that's where we can control, uh, you know, experiment with our blend modes, right? Soft light, not too bad, very subtle. We can also control the gradient to go back to our gradient tool, maybe move it down a little bit. 
so that we do have a little bit more of a harsher highlight down at the bottom, right? And now it's starting to look a little bit more realistic. There's obviously a lot more we can do. We can add in some additional reflections based on what might be in the environment. Um, someone's saying flip it, you can certainly do that. All sorts of different things you can do to make this look a little bit more realistic, right? And you can also add maybe down here at the bottom, you can make it look like the reflection, so many different things. Um, so that's kind of how you, you would work with smart objects to create um, a mock-up. Right, but what if you wanted to create a mock-up from absolute scratch? Something like, if I hop over to here, if I look up, let's say, go back to Adobe Stock. And do maybe a laptop. Ooh, wow. Laptop mock-up, right? Something like this, right? You can, of course, download one yourself, but what if you're feeling adventurous and you wanna create this by yourself? Well, let's let's have some fun in the last 20 minutes or so, right? So I'm gonna create a new document and we're gonna start, let's do 1920 by 1080, just to keep it nice and, you know, 16 by nine. And we're gonna create, it may, might be a little bit too, no. Let me extend this down a little bit. Oh, don't need generative expand. It's basically just white. All right, let's fill that with white. And what we want to do now is we want to create that laptop from scratch. Now, the easy thing, right, is the screen itself. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the actual screen that displays the content. And that's important because we want to get those dimensions correct. So if I just drag out a rectangle, I'm kind of guessing here Right, and I might get close, but if you hop over to Google and you type in something like MacBook Pro screen pixel dimensions, you're gonna get something like this, right? 2880 by 1800. So now we can go here and either when we are creating our rectangle, we can click and 2880 by 1800, I think it was, right? And we can also control the border radius. We're gonna keep that as is for now. Now, obviously this rectangle here is going to be way too large, but we can shrink it down, making sure to not just hold down Alt, but we wanna hold down Shift as well, right? So we wanna make sure that we constrain those proportions so we have the correct size for our screen. So we'll leave it right about here. Now the screen itself, I don't think it has too much in terms of rounded corners. I think it's very subtle. So maybe I'll do something like eight. Keep it nice and subtle. We can always edit those within our properties panel over to the right. But now we want to go ahead and create the border for the screen. So we can very easily just duplicate this. Command and control J, not D, but J. Some applications it's D. Um, I'm gonna move it behind. I'm gonna change the color so we can kind of see what we're working with. And I'm going to extend it outwards this way a little bit. Now, it, of course, it will depend on the laptop that you're trying to model, right? Um, some have thinner bezels, some have much thicker bezels. We're gonna keep it relatively thin. Now we do want up here to round these corners a lot more than the screen itself. So I'm gonna round out these corners here to somewhere around, let's say 24. We'll see what that looks like. Now at the bottom, we do have a little bit of a, an extended area down here. So I'm gonna drag this down and the bevels kind of extend down or the, the, the corner radius extends down a little bit, but we will have the actual bottom of the laptop covering it. So I'm not too worried about that just yet, right? But we do have our screen, which looks great. And we'll want to make sure that this is converted into a smart object so we can very easily plop some content in there. So I'm going to right click and then convert to smart object and also name your layers. So this will be called screen and this will be called uh, bevel maybe? Or is it bev bezel or bevel? I don't know. It's one of the two, right? All right. Now, of course, we want to actually create that laptop 
kind of the, the base, right? So I'm gonna grab my rectangle one more time. And this time, instead of clicking, I'm just gonna click and drag out like this. Make sure it's centered. Our smart guides help us really nicely. I'm moving on top. And for now, I'm just gonna choose different colors just so it doesn't all blend in, right? There we go. Beautiful. Now, of course, we can leave it at this, but that's not very exciting. Um, now, this particular piece here doesn't really have too much in terms of rounded corners, maybe slightly, but we're gonna leave it basically at this, right? We're gonna move this down a touch. We wanna see a little bit of that corner radius curve a little bit. Now, this one here, depending on the style that you're looking for, it's either chrome or like a clay type of material, right? But we wanna go nice and chrome for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna call this base for now. And I'm gonna double click on this layer here. And I'm, we're gonna hop into our gradient overlay. And this is where the magic is gonna happen for this particular layer. So what you want is we want the angle to go left to right or right to left. In this case, it won't matter because we do want a reflected gradient because ideally if the lighting source is correct, um, you're gonna have the same shadows, the same highlights on both sides, right? So reflected is, reflected is gonna be nice. We're gonna keep the scale at 100. And now we wanna dive into the gradient and start working our magic. Now we only really have to work on one side. So the left side, we're actually gonna start by dropping the color. Now this is gonna be the middle, right? So we wanna start on this side here. Let me actually change this to lighter. And this side here, was it reverse notes on? Okay. Something like this. And we really want to create a bunch of different stops on this side here, right? So we want something a little bit darker on here and we're gonna really push this As you can see, we're starting to define, if I zoom in here, our shadows. Because you know, if you're looking at a laptop, it's gonna curve a little bit, right? So we wanna kind of mimic what that looks like. And if you're in like a studio with lighting, it's gonna be highlights and shadows and all sorts of different things, right? So something like this, and then there might be a big bright shadow or highlight. And then it's probably going to transition a little bit to more of a neutral color. So I'm gonna drop this like this. There we go. Now this one might be a little bit tighter, so I might just move this in a little bit. And sometimes you really have to move these pretty close to each other. Something like that. I think this might be a little bit too wide but we're gonna run with that. And then it might transition to, you know, a nice light color in the middle. Something like that, right? So you have kind of a little bit of a, you're kind of faking, you know, that curved look on the side here, which looks interesting, right? We'll see what that looks like. If we zoom out, I mean, that's not bad, right? Um, I think it might be a little bit, actually, maybe not. I don't know. Now, of course, it's being thrown off by this piece in the back. Let me actually change the screen. Yeah, Peter, you get the idea, right? For like three minutes, not bad. Um, the screen in the back is actually gonna be quite dark. And there's also a piece at the bottom, but we're gonna run with that. Now, also on the screen, there is, if I double click on the bezel, or bevel, I don't know, um, there is a border, right? So I can go ahead and add a stroke, maybe on the outside. It's a little bit more gray. Drop the size a little bit, something like that. There may even be one more stroke right on, maybe I'll increase it just a little bit. Make it a little bit darker. There we go, right? Just like that. Carol saying, come on, Howard, looks like 3D is still in Photoshop. If I spent a little bit more time, it'd probably look a little better. But we also have the um, that little notch. It's not like the notch on the phone, but it's like a notch where it helps open up um, your laptop. So if I go ahead and drag 
another rectangle, make sure this is on top. Right, make sure it's right in the center. It's kind of in this area here. Now the bottom definitely has a lot round of uh, pretty heavy rounded corners and then it, it doesn't, right? So I'm gonna round out the corners pretty heavily, but then I can unlock this and at the top, I can bring those corners back in. So it kind of, whoops, wrong way, right? Something like that. And then if I double click on this, let me actually start by just setting a pretty neutral color. I can double click on this and then add inner shadows. So I can add an inner shadow maybe on the left side. Something like this. Maybe I'll soften it out a little. Ooh. I can also do the same thing with using a gradient. And I'll add on the right side. Ideally, they'd probably be exactly the same if you're in a, you know, if this laptop is in a studio with, so what is it, 10 and 7 with uniform lighting and 40-ish for the lighting. Eh, it looks okay, right? Not, not bad, not great. But of course, it's kind of poking out. So what we want to do is we want to clip it or we can use a layer mask, but we want to clip it with this base. So if I go ahead and right click and then create clipping mask, it disappears. What's happening, right? It's trying to clip it with a, la a layer style and a layer, a layer with a layer style. So what you want is on that base layer, the layer that has that gradient overlay, we want to turn off uh, this one here, blend clipped layers as group, and then turn on blend interior effects as group. And that will allow, just like that, our layer to be clipped with a layer that has a layer style, right? Maybe I'll add a little bit of a drop shadow, but not, not the drop shadow that you might think, right? Maybe a white drop shadow, just to add a little bit of something down there. Might want to move this a little bit up and this a little bit up. There we go. Just to add a little bit. Of, there we go. We're getting there, right? Getting there. If I zoom out, ugh, I think it's a little bit too wide. That's a bit better. Now, for just a few minutes, it's it's looking okay, right? Um, obviously, there's that piece at the bottom as well, which you might be able to duplicate the base bring this down, right? And then grab the corners and extend those in quite a bit, the bottom corners, right? Move it, make sure it's behind. It is behind, right? That's way too large. But you're probably getting, trying to, you're getting it, right? And if I change the gradient overlay, we're probably gonna want, you know, much darker on the ends. Maybe this will move out a little bit. There probably won't be as many highlights down there. This is obviously not looking great right now, but you're getting it, right? But the point is, if you wanted to replace the screen, right, after all this work, uh, you've got your screen smart object, you double click on it, you hop over to Finder or your libraries. We've got screen here we might want to grab let's say this one here obviously this is not the right aspect ratio uh, for this particular screen but we're going to run with it maybe uh, generative fill could work possibly uh, but you save it and then hop over here and we've got our update right which is great now this piece at the bottom is going to bother me but we only have like a minute left that the um, the shape just isn't working. Uh, so we'd probably have to create like a custom shape because if I keep rounding this out, basically at its limit, right? Um, even though I extend this up, almost, but then I have to move it outwards. There's just a lot. So we'd probably have to change the shape completely, um, but you get the idea, right? We can also use the pen tool to create something like this and then go to about the middle. Something like that. Oops, I was on, made it a path. Way to go, Howard, way to go. 
Now it's a shape. Much better. <laughs> I'm always rushing at the end of these streams. And then you can duplicate this over. You can flip it, edit, transform, flip horizontally. Move this over to the side. Make sure to select both of those layers, merge them together, Command and Control E, and then start applying all your uh, uh, layer styles, your gradients, all that fun stuff. But there we go. We covered a lot today in terms of the world of mock-ups. Hope you all enjoyed this. Big thank you to everyone who has tuned in today. We're going to be back in just a few moments with more content, and I will see you all next time. Thanks, everyone.